Good morning, Chicklets. How are you guys doing today? So today we are going to be checking out the brand new RD7 camera from Halo View. Hey guys, my name's James. And I'm Ashley. Last year we sold our house and we're traveling across the country with our kids. Hi, my name's Goose and this is Maverick. <laughs> Come join us. So if you guys remember last year before we set off on our trip, uh, we installed one of Halo View's backup cameras right up there and I'm not gonna lie, it was a game changer. From traveling over a year with zero camera to then having something like a review mirror while you're towing was pretty incredible. But then Halo V reached out to us and told us that they have a brand new camera, the RD7, which has supposedly got all sorts of cool features, such as a better monitor for viewing in bright sunlight, uh, for using polarized glasses and things like that, better waterproofing on the camera back there, as well as probably the thing I am most excited about, better long range uh, capacity while moving at high speeds. Because in combination with the length of our rig, which is 36 feet and traveling down the road, you know, going 40 or even 60, 70 miles an hour, we would have some of those connectivity issues where it would slow down to be a much more stuttery kind of image, as well as being delayed delayed by a second or two, which if you're trying to use that as a review mirror for changing lanes and whatnot, not exactly beneficial. But I am very hopeful that with this new signal improvement that they have fixed those issues, but we won't know until we get this thing installed. So without further ado, let's climb up this ladder and let's get going. Instructions. So this is the improved monitor. Power plug for easy hookup. There's the camera right there. So when you first open up the package, it might seem a little bit overwhelming with how many components you have, but let me just walk you through it real quick. It's actually pretty simple. So the original Halo View camera came with very similar components. You had your camera, your power, and your antenna. These are the three new components right here for this one, which I'm actually really excited about. They have the brand new transmitter, which I think is this is what's going to solve those uh, connectivity issues. Plus, they actually have this giant extension cable. So say you have a 50 foot rig, which I don't think there's a real 50 foot fifth wheel, but say you did, say you had a crazy huge toy hauler. You could actually hook this up in the back and then run this cable along the top of your rig and then mount your transmitter towards the front of your trailer hence eliminating that distance or shortening that distance. So it goes from a 70 foot distance it has to transmit down to a 30 foot distance, which I am very excited about. So in combination with the brand new transmitter and this extension cable, I think we should have no connectivity issues. But let's go ahead and wire this up real quick so you can see how it all goes together. Uh, first off, the antenna just hooks up to the transmitter here. In the previous version, this antenna actually went directly onto the camera. Next, we have the camera, which then attaches to this Y splitter here. And this serves two functions. It allows you to connect the camera to your transmitter, but it also then is where you plug in your power. So you would take this red and black, this positive and negative line, and wire it into the power uh, in the back of your system. Sometimes you already have a outlet there you can tap into because uh, you're pre-wired for a backup camera. Otherwise, you'll just have to tap into your running lights or something like that. Just any 12 volt power is what this has to go into. And then this can either connect directly to your transmitter if you don't want to have uh, the extension or the extension cable then goes from here to your transmitter. So there it is all broken out for you. Your 12 volt power, your camera, goes into this Y adapter, which then goes into your extender cable, which then hooks up into your transmitter. I'm gonna try this first without this extension cable, because if I can not have extra wires running on the roof of my rig, I'm gonna not. Now, if I have connectivity issues, I'll try hooking that up and see how it goes. But this is the setup I'm gonna try right now. So something that might be a little different between this installation and what you're doing yourself is your rig might come with one of the uh, installation kits already pre-wired for it, whether it be Furion or one of the others. Uh, Halo View does make kits, conversion kits, to easily attach their uh, cameras to those pre-wired kits, but since I did this last year, I actually just took off my pre-wired Furion kit and attached the uh, Halo View kit right to it, or the Halo View mount directly to it. So hopefully, 
fingers crossed, I'm gonna be able to just unbolt the camera with their four little uh, Allen wrench uh, screws, hex bolt screws, and then attach the new one to it. So that's what I'm gonna try and do today. If you uh, have one of those pre-wire kits, you'll have to either use the conversion kit that Halo View makes or remove your uh, pre-mounted kit and bolt on uh, or screw on the new Halo View mount like I did last time. If you guys, again, wanna check out that video, it'll be linked up there on the iCards. By the way, I apologize for the nasty silicone. This is my first time using silicone last year, so I am quite embarrassed with how nasty it looks, but I don't think we've had any leaks, so it's doing its job. So as you can see on the previous camera, the antenna mounted directly to the back of it. So that's one of the differences between the old model and this new model we have here. So unfortunately, in true Chick's Life fashion, it is not coming apart as easily as I had hoped. The quick release connection is inside of the rig with how I wired it up last time. My bad, instead of leaving that connection out, so I do have to go ahead and unscrew the mount to get to the quick release for attaching it to the 12 volt system. That's just life. <laughs> This is the quick release I was looking for and unfortunately I had left that inside of the rig to try and keep it as super watertight as possible instead of putting it outside. So something that simple is what's causing that frustration. So instead of just doing this the quick way, I think I'm gonna go ahead and do it the right way. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off all of that nasty old silicone and whatnot. I do have some silicone in the underpass that I can use to then put it on there and hopefully it'll look a little bit nicer this time as well as if I'm gonna put it in a new camera, I might as well do it all right. to momentarily show you what I was having to hike up. First of all, that's about two to three feet, three feet off the ground. And then my ladder is sitting on my dirt bike rack. And that's what I was standing on. Safety first guys, do as I say, not as I do. All right, now that we've finished hooking up the camera in the back, now we have the easy part. We have our monitor, which we will go ahead and put up in our truck and it'll go exactly in the same spot that our previous monitor went. So the two monitors look almost identical, but uh, as I said earlier, it's supposed to have much better uh, viewing capabilities in bright daylight, which is usually when you're using it. Plus, it's also supposed to do better when you're wearing polarized sunglasses. So uh, one of the things that you might notice on a lot of monitors, that if you have your sunglasses on and you look down, you can't see the screen or it's super dark. So supposedly this one will work a lot better for that cases. So once we get it all hooked up here, we're gonna take it out on the road and do some tests, not only backing up, but at high speeds, checking it out with sunglasses and that kind of thing. So the camera does ship with a mount with this 3M sticky tape. This is a super beefy mount. The only reason we did not use this last time is because if you can see, it raises up the monitor about two inches and we were trying to get it as low profile as possible. So <laughs> Sorry, Goose is distracting me. She's riding her bike around outside right now because it is a beautiful day here. <sighs> Anyways, so what we did is just got some 3M Velcro adhesive and we have a tripod mount. So we have two in the front and one in the back here. And that served two functions for me. One, I didn't have to drill anything into the dashboard if I didn't want to, which is an option. There are uh, holes in the bottom of the monitor to where you can mount it and drill it, or you can put it on here. But if you look, we put this on top. I mean, look at how crazy tall that would be. And that would just block all of my view. So we must prefer it to be as low profile as possible 
just like that. And then when I'm driving here, it's really not obstructing anything because you can see behind it is just dash. So that is where we're going to put the new monitor and it should just slide up there in its place. And it does come with two different types of wiring. One where you can wire directly into the 12 volt system of your car and have it be a much more permanent and hidden thing, which is nice. Or you can do what we're gonna do and use the cigarette lighter adapter, which has a nice little power button on it here. The benefit of using the cigarette lighter for us is one, it's uh, much easier to remove or transfer it to a different car if we wanted to. So say we were towing this with a different truck, instead of having to go in and unwire the whole thing, we could just transfer the monitor into a different truck and we would then still have connectivity to our trailer. Plus it's also just in case we're not towing and we want to remove this behemoth of a monitor because we have the easy Velcro and the easy 12 volt cigarette lighter to unplug, we could easily take it out and just have our dash back to a normal rig. So anyways, that's why we chose the cigarette lighter, but Halo View does send you two different types of connection points for your monitor. Excellent, now that everything is functioning well and we have a crystal clear connection, I need to make sure everything is bolted down such as the transmitter needs to be attached because it's just sitting on the uh, fifth wheel roof. Need to get the 3M sticky for the monitor uh, and then tidy up some of these cables that I just kind of have dangling here. Then let's take it on the road and do some testing. So unfortunately, as you can see here, the transmission quality is not that great. It's still stuttery. It is better than it was before at times, but it is not, uh, it's not that much better. If anything, I would say it's comparable to what it was before, which is shocking because of the new transmitter kit. So what I'm gonna do right now is climb up on the roof and add that 40 foot extension cable so I can run that from the camera itself all the way up to the front of the trailer. That way the transmitter is placed up there and it only has to transmit the 20 feet or so to the truck itself. So here is our Y splitter we saw earlier. This is where the extension cable attaches and then we're gonna run it all the way up front here to the transmitter. So by doing this, we're essentially eliminating the length of the trailer, so 36 feet for me. I believe it's about a 40, 45 foot cable. So even if you have a huge rig, you can still do this with yours, run it all the way from the rear to the front. And they do supply these little 3M zip ties for you to easily attach the cord to the roof so you don't have it flapping all over the place. I just have my extra cables here tied down with a couple of those and uh, it seems to be working well. Now, as soon as I installed that extension cable, it completely eliminated that problem. It's crystal clear, there's no stuttery, and it's real time, which is exactly what I was looking for in a backup camera. All right, final thoughts, probably what you guys have been waiting for. Yes or no, do I recommend this camera? Short answer is yes, I do recommend the camera, but can you find a more affordable camera to do the job? Yes, you can. If you Google Amazon, or if you go on Amazon and look, within 10 seconds, you can find tons of backup cameras for around the $150 range. The things you need to consider before buying any of those cameras are how long is your rig, do you need it to be wireless, and do you need it to be a smooth transmission so you can use it as a backup camera or as a review mirror in real time when you're traveling down the highway. To be honest, I don't use the backup camera that much when backing up. I use it far more when I'm on the road and I'm wanting to change lanes or see if there's anything behind me just, just to kind of have that extra set of eyes behind my rig. Yes, it's nice when backing up and that's what it's designed for, but I really wanted to be able to use this when traveling down the freeway at 60 miles an hour. And uh, with some of those other cameras, you're gonna have that delayed or stuttery transmission, kind of like we did with the original Halo View camera, where if that car behind you is there right now, 
it might not show for another two seconds. So you really gotta know that. That's what the benefit of this brand new camera is, is it gives you that real time update so you can use it when you're traveling down the road. So I would highly suggest if you are going to get one of those other cameras, check out some of the reviews, see what the lag time is on those and see how they do with some of the longer rigs. Because this camera, I've seen reviews where people have not only like a 30 foot motorhome, but then they're towing a trailer behind that. So there's 70 feet of distance between the camera and the monitor and they say it's crystal clear in real time. One of the other cool features I forgot to mention about the Halo View uh, camera system is it is a camera system. So you can attach, I believe, up to four different cameras and they make a variety of cool cameras such as these that attach to your running lights or they have this one which is designed to attach to your license plate so you can have it as a backup camera or a second angle and just normal cameras that you can kind of attach wherever you want to any 12 volt power system. So you could use this as a security system or whatever you want to, but it allows you to have up to four different cameras either via a split screen rotating through or choosing individual cameras very cool so short answer yes i recommend it long answer there you go <laughs> if you guys have any questions about this camera or any other cameras or rving in general leave a comment down below thank you so much for watching especially to the end if you haven't give us that thumbs up and click that subscribe button and until next time guys remember stay positive get out there life is an adventure so make some memories